Good morning. Hello. Today we would like to tell you a journey that took us to this moment when David, tetraplegic for nine years, was able to stand between Jocelyn and myself after the treatment we have been developing. But let's first ask David to tell you what happened to him nine years before. This is the accident. This accident can't use this spinal cord. So now when the brain sends a command to the spinal cord to activate leg muscle, the signal is interrupted, leaving him paralyzed. However, we know that the region of the spinal cord necessary and sufficient to produce walking is located way below the majority of spinal cord injuries, five centimeters of spinal cord in the lumbar region. So because this region is disconnected from the brain, it's in a non-functional state. Our ID just reactivates the spinal cord with electricity. So we put electrodes on the dorsal aspect of the spinal cord, I applied stimulation, and a rat, completely paralyzed, with the stimulation is able to walk. Turn off the stimulation, the animal can't walk. Back on, and immediately locomotion resumes. I was a postdoctoral fellow at Los Angeles when I conducted this work and was offered the possibility to conduct my own research in Switzerland. At this moment, I wanted really to understand the underlying mechanism. To do so, we use modeling combined with a realistic anatomical model so we could understand what the electrical field would activate in the spinal cord. And what we found was completely unexpected because the stimulation actually does not activate the spinal cord directly, but activate the dorsal roots. Meaning that the biophysical property of the spinal cord turns the stimulation very unspecific into a very specific stimulation that activates this really well-organized system, the individual dorsal roots. This allows us to access different regions of the spinal cord. At this moment, we develop a radically new way to stimulate the spinal cord, which we call spatiotemporal stimulation. The idea is to activate the spinal cord at the correct place with the correct timing in order to reproduce the way it's activated naturally during walking. For this, we need a completely new generation of electrodes. So these are stretchable electrode array. You can see they can stretch them, twist them, and they still conduct electricity. So we could perform this proof of concept. Here, the rat has a severe contusion of the spinal cord. This is one week after the injury. The animal cannot walk. We apply the continuous stimulation. The animal will regain walking. But you'll see that at some point, the spinal cord is too much in a depressed state, so the animal will collapse. This is when we turn on the spatiotemporal stimulation, activating the spinal cord at the correct timing with the correct place to reactivate the circuit. Immediately, locomotion resumes, and we increase the vigor of the movement. At this stage, we felt we were ready to share this news with the world. We published this in science. It was broadcasted throughout the world. The little rat ended up in the front page of the New York Times. We have a feeling of pride, but immediately scared, because we know the difficulty to transit from the sophisticated laboratory, something working in rats, to a therapy that can help David to make a step. I understood that it was very important at this moment to move my laboratory to a place where the technology was being developed. So I moved to the Swiss Federal Institute of Technology in Lausanne. And what was very important also is to find a partner in the hospital who would be crazy enough to move this therapy to humans. That's when I met Jocelyn Block. That was in 2012, almost 10 years ago, when I first met him. He has all these fascinating stories and asked me, can we go tomorrow on the human being? Sure. Mm. <laughs> we had a few challenges. And one of the major challenges is to find the right implants to put in the human beings. 
there was nothing available on the market to stimulate the spinal cord of people with spinal cord injury. So we decided to partner with Medtronic. Medtronic has electrodes and spinal cord stimulation, but done for to treat pain. So they are not dedicated for this indication. So we had to work for them, trying to crack a bit the system, to use it differently, and you see all this chain of command to be able to do what Gregor wanted to do on the rat and then on the patient. It was implying electromagnetic waves, infrared, Bluetooth, a complicated chain of commands that was fantastic for a clinical trial, but we did not think that it would have been okay for a real therapy, isn't mm -hmm. it? Absolutely. So that's why we thought very early, or two years after having met, that we needed to control our destiny. And for that, first, we, we met these other people in Ecole Polytechnique, and together, we decided to found G Therapeutics, a little company at the beginning, ready to do new implants. And that was really the beginning of the startup. And at the time, Vincent Delattre, you see on this slide, he said, what well, is this new thing called Hello Tomorrow? First edition, looks really cool. I applied, it to, we are selected. Come with me to pitch. I said, well, I have too much work with science. I don't have time. He said, yeah, come on, come on, you come. We came, and it was really amazing. The first edition was so full of energy. 2,000 people packed in La Villette. And against all odds, we won. The first edition. Wow. I could not believe it. And quite frankly, this is the moment when I believed that the idea of a startup was good and it could work. We were sure it would work, right, Jocelyn? Mm -hmm. Full of enthusiasm. We thought, now we are going to be entrepreneurs. We went everywhere. We talked to bankers, to investors. We knocked at many doors. What happened? Nothing. <laughs> they listened to us, fascinated by the science, but I, we didn't know why they were not very much interested in investing in this company. And after a while, after thinking about it, we thought they believe that we are good scientists, but we have no experience in business. So we needed to partner with people with an experience in business and more professional in clinical studies. That's where we invited Jacques Deckers, the new CEO of the company, and Hendrik Lambert, who is a specialist for clinical study and regulatory. And what happened? So in 2012, 16, sorry, we, we were, Jacques Deckers was able to raise 36 millions, and this was the beginning of a real company, but he also decided to change the name of the company, of course, and instead of G Therapeutics, it became GTX Medical. So just after, with the help of Hendrik, we started designing our first clinical study, which was, it was very important for us. And in October 2016, we in implanted the first lead in David. So look at this. This lead is a Medtronic lead. And also with the Medtronic IPG, we put it at the dorsal aspect of the spinal cord and the little pacemaker that is delivering the electricity is located here in the belly. David, at the beginning of the therapy, he, we switch on the stimulation, he can step, and when we stop stimulation, he stops walking, and then you s switch again on the stimulation and he's able to step again. So that, that was great, and thanks to this, he could start training. And training is super important in this therapy. You have to train every day for many weeks and months in order to activate something. And he came after two months with a little surprise. Listen to him. Ready? So Gonzalo asked me how long I slept last night. I said six hours, but it was five. Because I woke up and uh, checked the toes on the left. Pour la première fois, <laughs> il est capable de bouger légèrement sa jambe paralysée sans aucune assistance, sans aucune stimulation. So for the first time on the left side that was completely paralyzed, he was able without stimulation to move a bit his toes and foot. And after six months, he was able without stimulation to walk between two parallel bars. This means that even seven years after spinal cord injury, thank you, thank you, nerves are growing. There is something happening. That was really unexpected. Mm -hmm. 
So we packaged this in a paper that we published in Nature, and it was just broadcasted throughout the planet. Good evening and welcome to the BBC News at six. A man who was told he would spend the rest of his life in a wheelchair has walked again thanks to extraordinary work by scientists in Switzerland. The 30-year-old who was left paralysed after a martial arts accident has had an implant attached to his spine which boosts the signals from his brain to his legs. And incredibly, some of the damaged nerves have regrown. Another man who had a cycling accident has regained some mobility. Palab Ghosh reports from Switzerland. So after this news, a lot of other media talked about it, and our institution started to be a bit proud of it. Huh? Okay. And they decided to support us. So two, two years ago, we founded, we created a center, a research center, that is gathering people from EPFL, mainly engineers, and on the side of the shoe, medical people, doctors, physiotherapists, nurses, together to accelerate this project. This center is called Neuro Restore and is funded also by Logitech. And there's a core philosophy that we really apply to all our treatment, which is going from very in-depth understanding of the science all the way to scaling up with proof of concept that we pass to industry to scale it up. And what was the first feature that we had to scale up? So the first thing we had to do is to design a new electrode array. As I told you, this pain electrode array was not good enough. So we had to understand, following what was discovered by Grégoire with the rats, where these little roots are located in the spinal cord, and to modelize the spinal cord in order to be able to design a precise electrode array to be able to activate precisely all these roots. So, so you planted it again. Yeah, he loves to put <laughs> electrode in the human body. Be careful. Yeah, we implanted it again. And then... But it's not enough. <laughs> you also have to configure the stimulation. And everybody thinks, oh, it's so complicated, this stimulation. What we did, actually, is to create a software that assists you with artificial intelligence that semi-automatically tune the stimulation. And the physical therapists have a tablet, and they can follow their patient, tune the stimulation, the amplitude, more flexion, etc. So it's very easy to use the therapy throughout the rehabilitation program. Mm -hmm. And what do they do with this? So they walk. And we have already nine patients implanted. So you see above six that have an incomplete spinal cord injury, and underneath three with a complete spinal cord injury, completely paralyzed. And all of them could benefit from this therapy and from the training. They can walk in the laboratory, but also outside from the laboratory. Here you can see they can have programs that are set to make them walk outside. Only walking? No, they, we can set them for other activities. Here, for example, a standing activity, which is very important not only to do boxing, but also for the simple action of having a beer at the bar, standing with friends. Mm -hmm. They can also have other activities like swimming or even biking. Here you can see that these participants can trigger more energy power uh, and uh, have a much longer and nicer rides. Yeah, but my mentor, when I started neurosurgery, always said there is a huge difference between zero and one. So this we had done. One is not enough to have a therapy. Even nine is not enough to have a therapy. To have a real treatment, you have to achieve this kind of therapy in at least 1,000 patients. And that's when it becomes a different phase even of the company. That's when the board of GTX Medical realized that we need a new CEO to scale up to 1,000 patients. And we have been very fortunate to find Dave Marver, former vice president at Medtronic, who led company in the NASDAQ, who decided to take the lead of GTX Medical with one condition. Guess what? To change the name of the company. <laughs> So, from after G Therapeutics, GTX Medical, he decided, and we found it was a very subtle way of thinking. So, you know, Grégoire, when he is writing an email, instead of finishing an email by bye bye or see you or best, he always writes onwards. So, Dave decided to take this word and put it as the new brand, the new name of the company, onward. Medical, so from GTX, it became onward medical. 
and not only change the company name, but really the philosophy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and this philosophy is very important for us. So these paraplegic are not anymore victims, but they are now heroes, athletes, empowered by movement. And look at this picture. It completely changes the paradigm of this therapy. And the vision. The vision is not only about restoring mobility, but that empowered by movement, people with spinal cord injury will enjoy life in every way that matters to them. And Dave Marver captured this new brain identity, took the technology that we had developed that is ready for large scaling up, and he packaged it to share it with the world. Consists of an implantable pulse generator smaller than a credit card, a lead that is placed near the spinal cord in the area responsible for triggering the desired movement or function, a communications hub, and a programmer. The ArcIM system is designed to be controlled by the user via a smartwatch or smartphone and voice commands. ArcIM may eventually be used to enable restoration of multiple functions, including arm and hand movement, blood pressure management, mobility, and bladder control. Onward Arc Therapy, helping people with spinal cord injury enjoy life in every way that matters to them. And that's a big difference. This is what we have learned over the past 10, 15 years of developing this. The team makes a big difference. At this moment, our team was complete, all the way from deep understanding of science, all the way to someone who understands marketing and large-scale application. So Dave Marver, in a short period of time, has been able to convince investors to take us to this incredible moment just a month ago. We ring the bell for what is thought to be the largest uh, IPO of a medtech in the European market history. We raised $100 million for a valuation of almost half a billion dollars. It was amazing. Unbelievable. Mm -hmm. And now, yeah. we are uh, on what is empowered with a mission. Uh -huh. So I think that my dream, your dream, is that one day, David and all the other paraplegic will be able to walk again, but not only walk again. Enjoy life in every way that matters to them. So you know what? Onward! Onward. <laughs> Thank you. Why don't I go in the middle and <laughs> I can ask on both sides the questions. Um, first of all, congratulations for having such great success. Is there anything still that you are hoping for? Because what is next for you? Because you achieved already so much in such little time. What are you working towards? A thousand patients. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a lot of work still. <laughs> but you, you received quite, uh, quite a lot of accolades and gotten a lot of prizes. Does that help also to really get to the next step? Are these incentives important? Because we are always talking about how do we identify the next big startup that is coming up. So did it help that you won some challenges and made you know, sort of the possibility to have also come some kind of exposure? Exposure is always important. I, the media makes a big difference. You know, when you do 6 p.m. and BBC, so oh, maybe it is important. Investors become interested, but it's just the beginning, the teaser, right? Then it takes a lot more from our experience to convince people to put a lot of uh, mm -hmm. millions investment in this type of company. Yeah, the ultimate dream is that every paraplegic at the beginning of, uh, just after a lesion, get a therapy like this, and that it becomes normal, you know, and there is still quite a lot of work to reach this. Do you, because you said you're, you need the 1,000 patients, do people seek you out? Do you see people out? How do you get to uh, find these right patients that really want to work with you? So for now, we are at the stage of clinical studies. So we have limited numbers of people we can include in each clinical study. But these clinical studies are done to one day have a product that is 
CE approved, that is uh, commercially available and that everybody can use and, and implant in their patients. Mm. Do you have a time frame for when it should be commercialized? Is there, is there a number? <laughs> <laughs> so next, uh, in about a year, there will be pyrotal clinical trial in the US. And once successful, it will be freely available. That's about two years. Mm. And um, we have also a question from the floor. Can the stimulation activate by any chance muscle stem cells for treating diseases like dystrophy? <laughs> no, not at this stage. So we are really, we, we, do, we concentrate mainly on spinal cord injury. We have other applications too, but not yet on muscle dystrophy because, you know, we target these roots that the, the muscle needs still to be able to be activated. So that's why it's important at this stage to have at least this last piece of nervous system that is still functioning. Mm. Are there any spinal cord injuries where you say where it can't work because you need a certain amount of stimulation still possible? Are there any, let's say, injuries where you say mm -hmm. this is not, at least for this particular device, it's not the right uh, patient? So what you saw, for this, we need five healthy centimeter of the spinal cord below the injury and that could be for now it can change in the future but for now this could be a limitation so but that's the only one <laughs> <laughs> that sounds good um so maybe um you've been uh, a winner how did it feel we, because you said pitching um we have the challenge again tonight and yeah. people are still pitching so uh, do you have any kind of advice for them before they go up tonight to try to win the prize money First thing is to talk to the hurt <laughs> for the very beginning. <laughs> Hit in the hurt. <laughs> then show that if you are serious and that's what we have been trained to say. Make sure we understand that you have the team to make this vision possible. Without the team, it doesn't work. Um, maybe that's also a question for you. How do you get the right kind of team to work for Onward? What are you looking for in people and how was it possible? Because you, you mentioned uh, without the team you can't really go onward and forward. Um, how do you try to find uh, the new talent to really work with you? This is very complicated actually. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good, so we have headhunters and interviewed. I mean, how many CEO did we mm -hmm. interview, Jocelyn? And, yeah, yeah. and as chief technical officer, and this is so important, every single piece mm -hmm. of the C-levels is critical to make this a success. But also maybe what you have seen is that, you know, this Neural Restore, which is the research center where we have a lot of new engineers coming and onward, they, they work a lot together. And sometimes, you know, you have one person who could also be good to do something in onward. So we have also this access. Yeah, this but is it our, uh -huh. our specificity, yeah. though. But I wish everybody to have this luxury, yeah, 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 yeah. but it's, but it's, it's rare. But it's difficult, especially yeah. when it's And you can see how way. our brand identity onward and no rest are exactly the same. Mm -hmm. We share color, logo, size, etc. So it's a continuum from academy to industry. Thank you so much for taking the time to explain to us uh, the project. And of course, onward and good speed. Onward. <laughs> onward. Have a great <laughs> Thank day, Thank you guys. so much, Jocelyn. Thank you.